All right, so hopefully my voice is doing okay. Um, I don't think it's at 100%, but hopefully I'm not coughing up a storm here. This is what I'm worried about. I don't care how many people show up to the stream. I'm just glad to, to be back, glad to be, you know, communicating with people. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And my cat's meowing in the background. All right, cats. <clears throat> What's up? What's going on? Uh, good luck this week. Dude, I don't know if you're into sport betting, but check out. Um, I was into sports betting, not not too much. Um, I usually throw a couple of dollars at certain things, but not really into betting too much. I know a bunch of people that are, and they're into it way too much, I would say. So yeah. Good morning. I know I missed a bunch of uh, uh, streams oh, for a couple of days. And I would have streamed earlier today. It's just my my throat was not ready. My like my voice is not ready. It takes a while to adjust still. <clears throat> morning from the Dominican Republic. Wow. Good morning. I um that's where my wife and I had our, our honeymoon. Made two hundred dollars off of two dollars and fifty cents on NBA parlays. These guys are super good. That's great. That's great. I know a bunch of people that made a, that make a lot of money on sports betting. If you do it the right way, I mean, some people just get greedy. Um, same thing with the stock market. Some people just get greedy and they're like, "Oh, you know what? I'll parlay here, parlay here, parlay here, and if I win all these, you know, I win ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars." And it's like, why don't you just settle for, you know, I don't know, five thousand dollars? Or less than that. Looking like a red day. Um, I mean, GME is looking positive. AMC is looking a little bit positive, but they normally are around, hovering around that 1%, whether it's 1% increase or decrease in the pre-market. So yeah, it's looking, it's looking like a, a mix, a mixed bag. But you can look at all of the different the other positions and you can definitely say that it looks like it's going to be a red day. But some people would say, Hey, these red days mean that they're buying opportunities. So something like a riot that brings it down to $64 means that it may be close to a buying opportunity, right? Dropping down, um, actually having that decrease, it's fighting back and forth. You might see a uh, jump off from like right here. You might see a double, double touch and that'll be amazing, right? Anybody else woken up with a swollen uvula? Mine is killing me. No. <clears throat> Taking a look at AAL, American Airlines, yes, I feel uh, it's going to launch back up this year, already started to see. Yeah, I, I've been talking about American Airlines, I actually had a video on it a while back um, saying that I believe um, American Airlines is going to actually have a, a jump, jumping point, um, and I didn't know exactly when it was going to happen, it just didn't make sense that they were dropping down. Um, so much uh, well it kind of made sense because the pandemic lack of travel I understand and a bunch of people getting out but that also gave people an opportunity to get in and I try to tell people that you know stock market is about buying and selling right so if it is about buying and selling then that means that when people see a low price they're gonna buy into it and that's what I've seen with American Airlines and the fact that they're gonna be up and running once the pandemic is really gone Feed the damn cat, Matt. I do feed the cats. Uh, we noticed that we were feeding them too much. So now um, it seems like what they used to overeat and that was their norm. So now we don't feed them that much. So um, yeah. And they tend to meow back, back and forth to each other. Down to American Airlines sub 13. Well, that's great. That's really great. I do have some free stocks here that I wanted to 
uh, check out while we're while we're going over all this stuff. You got four free stocks. Whoops, where'd it go? Come on. See what these free stocks are. ADT, you can probably guess. ADT, ADT. Yeah, I got a GE. All right, so yeah. A bunch of free stocks there, that's good. Happy with that. So if you're looking to get free stocks, make sure you hit that, uh, uh, that link down below. Um, sign up, deposit $100, and you'll get free stocks. Speak without voice as an adult. The only man out us because they. This is adolescence. Interesting. <clears throat> I'm down three hundred and twenty dollars in the pre market. That's bad. Oh, over a um, a number of positions. It's not just one position. Morning. Would you mind checking Hive as well? So Hive, a lower price stock, what are we looking at them as? Um, it, it's looking at, let's, yeah, three month mark, we're looking at the two hour candlesticks. <clears throat> you can see that, um, I love to see the separation, um, to see the consistent growth over a certain period of time. I know this is only about two months that we're, we're looking at. So, or three months actually that we're looking at. So um, you can see the increase um, from the 200 EMA over or under the um, 15 moving average <clears throat> and you can see the separation which indicates it's going to continue to increase and the fact that it stays um, away from it is a good sign I don't always like seeing these large increases in a short period of time so this is from um, February 10th all the way up until today um, when I see these increases like this I'm always saying that there's going to be a decrease here so um, looking at Hive I would say there's potential um, especially with the um, the longer term growth is not something that happened in a week or a month. It's like a couple of months or a few months. Um, and the only thing that scares me is the fact that you have this growth here. Anybody that sees this growth, people are going to take profits. So I would say definitely pick your spot. If I'm looking at a 10,000 foot view, I would say it looks like a, a great position to get into. You just need to pick your spot so that you don't get stuck at the high point and it, it ends up dropping down to $2. So, um, Pick your spot, know exactly when people are going to sell off, and um, yeah, then you can get in and ride it on the way up. But yeah. <clears throat> Is Riot a good entry point? I definitely said that I think Riot will have more of a decrease. Let's look at let's look at Riot here. So where's Riot? Where's it? There it is. <clears throat> So yeah, I definitely said that Riot would have more of a decrease and I, I wanted them to touch down. Now what I wanna see, what I really would like to see in order to have an increase to ride it up, maybe to 84 and probably push through that, is a, a double bottom here. I wanna see this, this W formation, because if you do see that, then that indicates that it is going to uh, push up and it is fighting at this moment, meaning that it has buying strength down here. Now does this mean that it will not push below this? No, it does not mean that it will not push below it. It's just highly unlikely that it will if it does have that double bottom. Now, I think that you could definitely see a buying opportunity here, but I'm waiting for that decrease. If it does increase, then you can, I, I feel like there's going to be something that pushes below that point here. Um, but if you feel like that's the low, you can gain a, a little bit of profit from it, then yeah, it depends what you're looking to get out of it. If you're looking to get a short-term gain up to $84, then yeah, you could possibly see a reversal and um, jump up from here. I'm having an ascending um, level of support rather than a just this um, equal level of support here. <clears throat>
So if you do see that I, that buying opportunity to where it completely reverses, which it's not showing here in the, in the buy orders, it's showing buying and sell orders. It's showing that you have a lot more sell orders than buy orders, meaning that it is going to go down and continue to go down. Um, but once you see that double bottom, I think that's going to be an indicator to, you know, push up. So I seem sick. <clears throat> My voice is still like, it takes a while to adjust in the morning, like a long time. <clears throat> if you could please hit that like button that would be amazing we got 400 people in here I'm going to go until you know um, uh, 10 minutes after the market opens so 10 o'clock or 10 minutes 30 minutes <clears throat> TRLY please um, so, like I said with uh, Tilray, um, they did fall below my my drawing of a trend line here, um, but they are starting to flatten out, which is a good sign. This could be a possibility to get in, but it is going to be a slow riser. I don't think it's going to be something where you can expect a large push. That's what I don't um, think you'll see from this. This large uh, push that you see in here and this huge pullback is just people pumping up the stock to sell off in order to make their profits. So. All you need to do is um, pick your spot here, which this may be an entry point and it might go down a little bit more, but you do see positivity um, coming from this, especially looking at the trend of the whole thing. You know, you can see this, this trend starting from here. Let's delete this trend that we have here. Let's draw another one. Look at that. Almost, almost having all those touch points. You're almost at that touch point. So it might come down maybe a little bit, but it's going to follow that trend line there. Um, and I think that it's going to completely um, reverse field soon, but not have like obviously the spike. So this could be an entry point. <clears throat> and if you want to ride it out for a couple of months and make a decent amount of profit, especially on a cannabis stock, yeah. Mitch, I did not say AMC was over. AMC is the long-term play, and I still have um, my stocks or my uh, my shares in AMC. I don't have any shares in GME. That was the position that I sold. If you're not familiar with it, I didn't say that it was over. I said the squeeze. I don't believe a squeeze is possible. Um, a squeeze consists of multiple things, and I don't think a squeeze is possible. I do think a slight increase. Um, or a rapid increase is possible, like what we're seeing with other stocks. But like things like this, I wouldn't, or things like you know Riot or Tilray or anything like that, I wouldn't consider a squeeze. But they have, you know, pushed up quite a bit because people were pushing the stock. So this is what I'm seeing with um, AMC, and that's why I'm still talking about AMC because I still have 1,700 shares with AMC, um, still posting about them, and maybe even averaging down in order to uh, bring that cost basis lower so that I can profit a lot sooner. This is all about profiting, right? <clears throat> <coughs> I don't have any comments on Bitcoin. I thought that, you know, coughing like that would actually get away from the mic, but I think that that just shot right down to the mic. No, no, no. Um, yeah, the thing is, is, a lot of people like to do that. Uh, P, P Chan, um, yeah, you said even if, um, or, sorry, but even if a person sold the stock, uh, doesn't that mean they have to pretend it doesn't exist anymore or that looking at it doesn't have value? No, I'm, I'm not trying to say that. Now, you need to not be, you know, salty about what you're looking at and no matter what, um, I've learned in the past, especially with Facebook, that you don't go back in and you trade with emotion. If you feel as though the stock um, lost money and you feel like you lost a lot of value in it, then you need to stick to that. And yeah, it could be potential that you can gain a quick swing trade or day trade here and there, but 
The point is, is that you do not go in for a long-term play again. And you do not um, look at it. Yes, you should be able to look at it and say that my positions do not exist anymore. I do not want to invest in that position anymore. But that's not the overall mindset that you need because sometimes you lose money. And if you lose money, it doesn't mean you can't make money. You just can't trade with emotion thinking that you're going to gain all $3,000 that you lost back. So that's why I still look at GME and still um, give them the attention they deserve. Um, but I'm not going to talk about them a lot because that's not something that I look into for my positions. I'm mainly going to be focusing on AMC when it comes to the price action. But I will go through the stock market as you see different um, prices and how they're increasing and all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, don't get caught chasing a stock you don't want to. See, some people may think that, you know, GME is a dip and just because... Um, Certain people are investing into it. It's pushing, maybe pushing the stock up a little bit, but I really don't care about that. I got out strictly because it creates a message and uh, to that to myself and tells me that you made a mistake, Matt. You did not need to hold on to this. You should have taken your little bit of loss or taking the two times that you had a gain, um, but I didn't. I decided not to do it, and it, it's going to hit. It's going to hit harder if I have a $3,000 loss versus a $1,000 loss. So it's showing me that, hey, Matt, stick to your strategy, you know. <coughs> Anyone else access the Intel account? JP Morgan submitted AMC all option on Friday. I just saw it. Just wondering, was your... I, I did not see that. I did not see that. It's a Fintel account. No, I didn't. I did not see that. But I mean, anything that's anything that has the potential to push the stock price up is obviously a good thing. I just think uh, the the problem that we're facing is if we're going to have the volume with the amount of people that you know want to invest into the position. Because I know there were a bunch of um, things going out there saying that we're holding ninety nine percent of um, this stock, but we are holding a large majority of the stock. It's just not a just not that much. Um, but we still need the volume. You know, we need that volume. And if we see volume on the negative side for AMC, um, where we have maybe 200 million, then that's not obviously a good thing, but we should not see that at these low prices. We can, because since so many people are holding it, then that means that the potential um, increase in volume could come from that negative side to where the number of people that are holding it are selling it, but I don't believe that's the case. I believe we're going to see a, a slow moving increase. And if we see something massive, then that'll be absolutely phenomenal. But if it does go down to, let's say, 450, I will double down on my investments. And um, let me actually see what is <coughs> going on with this over here. Um, thank you for the super chat, JM. I appreciate that. And thank you for the super chat, uh, old white man. I appreciate that. A lot. Buy and hold, download AMC. I don't know what download AMC is, but. Um, did tell you when GME was 55. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I told myself multiple times, hey, look, you had a price target of $79. Why did you not go out at that price? Well, the reason why I didn't go out at that price was because they actually didn't fill my order at that price. I've had a fill all order and they did not fill the order. I guess it was a quick move. And I understand that happens. Um, the second time, hey, why didn't you go out at that price? Or why didn't you go out at a, uh, a, a larger price? Because I had a $2,000 gain. And there were multiple factors. One, um, obviously you see the, the um, paper hands community to where everybody says you should not sell even though you have a profit. So seeing that, I know that there's potential to continue to go up, but I seen the volume decrease and I said, hey, you know what, I should get out, but I set a price target for $96, went to 95, didn't set a, um, a trailing stop and that's just what happened. So I take full responsibility in everything that happened and uh, that's why I took the loss, accepted the loss and didn't wanna make it uh, worse. <clears throat> and it may possibly get better and I hope that it does. I really hope that it gets, you know, grows 50% today. That'll be absolutely phenomenal for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I had to get out of GME. 
Yeah, Eric, I, I don't understand it either. <clears throat> I mean, the whole the point, whole point of being in the stock market is to um, get some sort of profit and you know even have a strategy, especially when it comes to trading. Uh, trading is all dependent on whether you have a strategy or you don't, and success is dependent on whether you have a strategy or you don't. And I'm always sticking to my strategy, and the fact that I did not um, really hit me hard. And you could see that you know three thousand dollars obviously is not something that I'm gonna you know go and cry about and you know not trade anymore over. But still, I mean, it, it's a, enough of an impact to say, look, you made a mistake. Let's go ahead and fix this. You know. <clears throat> we both learned thirteen dollars uh, buy thirteen dollars hold it. no it's AMC <coughs> yeah I mean I I like to I like to listen to people um, what they have to say um, when it comes to GME and all that stuff but people that just get upset at somebody for you know, selling, that's obviously not the people you want around because it's about learning how to invest in the stock market. You should learn so much from this. Um, and I feel like you can. You get angry because someone you follow sold the stock. You're doing it wrong. Make your own decisions based on the reach. You Yes, you, you're right. You're 100% right. Uh, NE Patriots 77, you're absolutely right. Just because you don't, just because you don't own a stock, you sold it. <coughs> Wait, sorry, I guess maybe I'm reading this the wrong way. <laughs> sorry, I think my comment was read the wrong way. I meant to say just because you didn't, just because you don't own the stock or sold it, it doesn't mean the analysis is suddenly not valuable. <coughs> yeah, you're right. I, I think you're right there. There's no reason to stop thinking about or talking about it, especially if something like the market that changes consistently. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, that's the reason why I follow all of these um, because they are big movers and they still have a lot of attention to them. And with the attention, it's going to be something that a, a lot of people see and say, all right, well, it's up 12%. Let me invest in here and get in because you know this person invested, this person invested, and it's going to continue to push that price up which could possibly be, you know, 50%, and I hope that it is. I really do. I lost 3K from AMC. Uh, 3K out of 10K, I have not beaten up about it. The money <clears throat> is a tool. We'll learn currently at 5K VRL. That, that's good. I mean, that's, that's the way you want to look at it. I mean, you want to look at it as a teaching, teachable moment um, if you lose money and then go into the next one and set your profit targets, understand what you're willing to lose in that situation, and then go on about your day because you'll be able to be more profitable by having just that top profit target and that um, loss target. So in my opinion, that's a great way to uh, look at it. get out of GME and get into AMC. People say that they have a lot more potential for AMC. GME just has a lot more potential to move a couple of dollars. So uh, GME will move um, $10 versus AMC moving a dollar in a day. AMC going to $10 after earnings. I mean, I hope so. It all depends on what the volume is. If it blows past 200 and rises rapidly, they they can do a GME style halt on the the all trading again. Yeah, I mean, uh, J, JM, they definitely can um, when it comes to AMC. If you see that increase, they can definitely do something. It seems like they're they're ready to manipulate any position possible um, and then bring that, that stock back to earth. And um, I wouldn't say, you know, you hold out until it goes to the moon. Um, I would say you hold out until you hit your profit target. Whoever has a profit target, um, make sure you hold on to that profit target. Right now it's up, you know, one, 
Uh, AMC is up 1.5% in the uh, pre-market. So, yeah. <coughs> yes, I forgot to say that this is not financial advice. This is merely just my opinion. So, uh, definitely look into your own situation. Do your own due diligence. And uh, hopefully you can get some sort of profit out of it. Only started trading a few weeks ago and doing pretty well. But exits are the hardest part. Yes, they are. I regret every sell because it always goes up after make. This is the thing, uh, uh, P. Chan. You don't want to. You don't want to ever do that. Regret your your sell positions. If you profit out of it, it's good. Because a lot of people will wait it out, wait it out, wait it out, wait it out until it decreases. And if they if they do that, they're, they're going to basically say, you know what, I'll get to where it break even. It, it breaks even. Now, what they're doing is one, they're wasting time. Um, by not being able to invest in another position that could make them money. Two, they're losing money by you know not you know uh, selling at a certain point. And uh, it, it's just there's a bunch of other things that go into it. It's absolutely ridiculous when I see people say, "Oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to hold on for a while. I'm just going to keep holding." No, there's so many other positions. If you're looking to gain a profit out of it, then gain your profit because the point of holding stocks are. You know, either you gain a dividend from it and you hold on to it for a long period of time or you sell the stock that you own. You know, you're not gaining anything from it unless it pays a dividend. So take that, sell it, gain your profit and go on about your day. People will will wait and wait and wait. And it is ridiculous. <clears throat> Definitely, I would say that getting in is an easy part. You can get in, but knowing where the exit point is, is the, the hardest part possible. Some people are not disciplined to take that, that, um, that gain. And this is why I looked at GME and said, I made a mistake because I did not show that I was ready to take that gain. And it was only, you know, it was a $300 gain and then you had a $2,000 gain or $1,900 gain. And I decided not to, um, not to sell. And that was a mistake on my part. That showed that the, I did not have a full exit strategy I had a partial exit strategy with the thought of changing and it just didn't work out for me. Does AMC give you dividends? Not anymore. Uh, I believe they, they stopped their, their dividends. <coughs> they were giving it for a long period of time though. I take my initial investment then I let the rest ride. That's great. That's definitely great because then you're playing with house money, right? So everything else, you're still making something out of it, but it still has potential to go up. So that's something that I will do um, occasionally. Depends what I see in the position. If I see it's gonna be a complete reversal, I'll take everything out and then reinvest um, the dollar amount that was, that was gained off of it. So let's say if AMC is at $5, I invested at $5 here and it goes up to $10 but I see the amount of sell orders that are coming in, I see the complete reversal, then what I'll do is I'll sell that, wait for it to come back to a lower point, and then end up getting in at whatever the, the gain was. So I'll take my initial investment of that, you know, um, 10,000 shares or 1,000 shares at $5, and then whatever the gain was, I'll invest it back into at the $5 mark or $6 mark or wherever I feel it's going to reverse back up. So. Numerous military contracts and IBM partnership with a PLTR. Anything technologies I like to see? Um, let's see. So we have a lot of movement here. <clears throat> it is a $29 stock. You can see in the past, um, let's say, month or so, it did have a lot of movement upward um, and then did fight back, basically back to where it was now. Let me look at the 10,000 foot view or 100,000 foot view here. You can see a lot of positivity here. I do not like seeing this crossover indicating that it's going to decrease. Now we are seeing a little bit of a bottom here, but the problem is, is that in the current days, you're seeing a lot of sell orders over buy orders. So if I'm looking at a long-term view, yes, you can see a lot of increasing. And I think that it could be a buy opportunity, um, hopefully at this moment. Right now, we're basically gonna be riding it on the way up which I don't like to do. I don't like to chase stocks, but 
you know, as I look into this, I can see that you have the 200 EMA below the 15 moving average, which is a good thing. Um, as it gets through all of this time, you could see that it stayed above that, um, which is great. It has this double top, oh, kind of double top. It, it does extend past it, but let's see if it does have any other, it doesn't have any other touch points here, but it did look like it was, you know, resisting at certain points, uh, which means that it may end up pushing back up to about that point and then coming back a little bit. But with the overall trend of it, you can see that it does have an increase. So I do like to see that. Um, so this may be a buy opportunity. Um, if you're looking to gain a short term profit, you can definitely gain something quick out of it. Being at twenty nine dollars, having the potential to go to forty five is, I would say, actually potential to go to thirty eight. Yeah, you can gain a quite a, you know a decent profit out of it if you're looking short term. Long term, you can definitely see a profit out of that too. <clears throat> the software that I'm using is Weeble uh, J Kelly. The link is in the description. All you have to do is click the the link, sign up, deposit a hundred dollars, and you'll get free stocks as well. So yeah, definitely check out this platform. And if you go into the download section, you can download the separate platform. I sold shares at $55 initially and uh, 60 and then bought it was one hour later, 53 same amount. Um, what? But my price reflects $58. Wait. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to understand this. Uh, I have a question. I sold shares at at fifty five dollars initially. Bought in at sixty. Uh, so I sold the loss, then bought the same shares one hour later, fifty three dollars, uh, same amount. But my buy price reflects fifty eight dollars. Can you explain? Now you must have some sort of um, software that updates based on history of investing. So overall loss on the um, the stock. So the thing that it will, it will show you um, some uh, stocks um, or some uh, platforms, I'm not sure uh, which platform will show you that, but they'll show you the overall loss on that stock throughout maybe a year's time or uh, short term holds, especially in um, one hour being in the same day. Uh, that could be a possibility. And that's the reason why it's showing the, you the overall loss of what you did have and what your break even point would be. Um, if you know buying in at 53 and that's what i think that would be um that definitely would be there's no other way around that um it's not that you actually had positions in there before um you know you invested more money in there so it's not like you had 50 and then you're adding on 10 and adding on 20 adding on 60 or whatever it's the fact that you had 55 shares you sold all those and then you bought it at a lower price so yeah it's going to tell you what your break-even point is so that's what I'm getting from it. Weibo is from China, I believe. It's China owned. After cold, bro. Everything seems good. It's just my voice. As I start to talk, um, it starts to warm up a little bit, but then it also gives out a couple of times. For some reason, I thought that was AMC up 3%, but it's not. Let's look at AMC up 2% still. He's talking sale wash. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes. I know what you mean. But the field price shows uh, 53. Well, yes, even though it is filled at 53, you're going to see the update of um, everything there. So let me, let me look at this, look at something here. <coughs> um, okay, so here we go. Let's look at this. Uh, the sale wash rule is uh, where is it? 
Revenue Service regulates and prevents taxpayers from uh, taking a tax deduction for securities sold in a wash sale. A wash sale occurs when the investor sells or trades a security at a loss uh, within 30 days before or after buy another position. I'm trying to look for the actual definition here. Yeah, so this is what you're looking you're looking at a, a sale wash. So hopefully that does uh, help you out. One hundred six, nearly at the bottom in recent days, up eleven percent right now. Uh, Matthew, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, find find its low. You know, I just looked at that, but find its low and be able to get in. Because if you're looking for a short-term gain, yes, you can get something from it. Long-term gain, yeah, that's great to be able to get in at a lower point. Right now, at this point, it seems like you would be chasing it a little bit. But uh, yeah, for PLTR, uh, yeah, I can say that there's definitely an investable point there right now. Weeble is for stupid people? No, I think I think Weeble, uh, things like Weeble and and actually Robinhood. Even though I I don't really mess with Robinhood anymore because the fact that they have no real customer service is something that really bothers me. Maybe they'll really work on this, but um, is that they get people into investing, newer people into investing that don't typically know about investing or understand um, the basics of investing. And this is what they're showing them: the basics of investing. But then when you get into the Weeble platform, when you look at this, it starts to get a little bit more complex and you start to understand more you know you understand what the indicators are you understand what the candlesticks are doing um that's what it's all about and i think that weeble will um bring a new audience here and that's why i like it you know one you get free stocks with a lot of different promotional periods um and then also you're you're able to get a lot out of this platform that you wouldn't get with other platforms so i feel like weeble gives you a lot more um, then Fidelity, I feel like Fidelity does give you a lot of educational tools and it's standard, people understand it. Um, I, I like Fidelity, don't get me wrong. I've been using Fidelity, I talk about Fidelity, I have videos on Fidelity with hundreds of thousands of views, I understand. But um, I'm telling you that the platform of Weeble gives you a lot more when it comes to trading um, and doing your technical analysis, I'll tell you that. Does Fidelity have commissions? It does not. Basically, uh, no platform really has commissions nowadays um, just because of Robinhood, really. And then other ones, I believe First Trade also had $0 commissions as well. Where can I contact you about the artwork? Um, you can definitely contact me on my, uh, you know, my Instagram. I've been um, entertaining some, some offers going back and forth with some people. Um, but you know, I haven't really found anything that's that that's what I really like. Somebody, um, you know, uh, really has some great artwork here, and I, I was going back and forth with that person, but um, I don't think that that's gonna really work out. So I'm still entertaining things, still looking at different designs, but I don't want to have to, um, you know, take it hand like step by step. I want somebody to come with me and say, hey, this is what I, this is the idea that I have for you. And I want to be able to say yay or nay. Um, and it seems like the whole the whole deal of working with a bunch of people is taking up a lot of time um, because there's people that I'm going back and forth with and I don't want to have to go back and forth. I just want people to just say, hey, this is what I have. This is my uh, portfolio. Okay, uh, do you want me to create something just like this? Or 
um, this is the idea that I have for your channel specifically. You know, I don't want I don't want any like back and forth there. I just want that. Well, not any back and forth. I'll go back and forth maybe like once, but going back, you know, ten times or twenty times is something that I don't want to waste time with. You guys in the U.S. are so lucky with no commissions. Ten dollar buy slash sell with TD in Canada. That's that's horrible. <coughs> Yeah, but now uh, from what I see, they're looking at, sorry, give me a second. You recommend buying with margin funds. That, that all depends, Javier. Do you have, are you disciplined? Because playing with margin is no joke. No joke at all. Um, so if you, if you want to trade on margin, then make sure you're disciplined. Because if you're not disciplined, you can lose a ton of money. So especially if you're shorting, because there's no there there's there's no ceiling to how much you can lose when it comes to um, shorting. And I've shorted before. I've lost money with shorts. I've gained a ton of money with shorts. But you have to use it the right way, and you have to make sure you're disciplined. <coughs> um. Where was I at before this? I always like to jump around as I start to look at comments. I'm sorry if I literally was about to talk about your comment and I skipped it. In the US is so lucky with no commission to buy and sell on TD. I think that's where I was. I'm losing my train of thought. It looks like AMC is pushing 2% here. Let's look at it closer. It did get up to six dollars it seems to fight back at that six dollar mark all the time Sorry guys, if all you hear is coughing. Ten thousand short shares available with AMC. Uh, availability with AMC. You're saying that there's a. I I I don't know how I I feel about that. I feel like um. Ten thousand short sales AMC Fintel. This table shows the number of shares available. Well, that's a good thing, right? Only having um, a certain amount of uh, shorts available um, is definitely a good thing. I mean, with the fact that the only thing is that with any any squeeze, you would need to see the the volume, right? So the volume is what I'm worried about. You're going to see the price go up. It's definitely going to go up. GME part two? What are you talking about? I, I think it's definitely going to go up. I still think that it is a a slow grower if I see something that's you know skyrocketing I'll be really excited about it meaning that people are getting into it. you're gonna see a ton of volume um, that's what I would like to see but from what I'm seeing right now before the market actually opens you're seeing a lot of sell orders come in at that six dollar mark we have a lot of buy walls we have a buy wall at the five dollar and sixty five cent mark but we have a sell wall of forty five thousand shares at six dollars so hopefully we can continue to push up GME to the moon. I don't think that's, 
I, I hope so. I really hope so. CCIV is up crazy. Weren't they down um, quite a bit for a little bit? <coughs> up 19% in the pre-market. That's really good. You see that huge gap up here. Um, do you have any sell orders that are coming in? Um, it looks like you know you have a lot of sell orders that are coming in, but they're not at a, a crazy overlapping scale. It's starting to get there. You see that you have a lot of sell orders. Uh, and it looks pretty equal. So you might see that continue to go up. CCIV looks pretty good in the pre-market. Um, up 10%, basically up $10. It's really good. Keep an eye on it. GME wave part two. I hope so. Hope it continues. You got up 14%. That'd be amazing for a lot of people. <clears throat> Continue to push this up. Continue to drive this up. Uh, we got a thousand people in here. If you could hit that like button, that'll be amazing. Please do so. <clears throat> uh, we got six minutes until it opens. But I hope that we see a jump up by AMC. It's, it's looking pretty positive at the end of you know, the pre-market. And I want to see it continue throughout the day. I got I got 16 more free stocks that we can go through uh, before the end of the day. So if you want to uh, take a look at that, we can definitely take a look at that. Remember, if you want free stocks, go down the link in my description. All you have to do is click that link, sign up, deposit $100, and you'll get free stocks. Um, and then you can also you know uh, invite your your friends, your family, and you can get free stocks as well because free stocks are amazing, right? <coughs> when does the GMA hearing continue? I have no idea and I can't say that I have no idea because I, I had to think about it because for some reason the date popped in my head and I please check Mavis Mavis is down 1% as of now I know we still have four minutes so let's look at uh, Mavis definitely has a lot a lot of potential um, MVIS has a, a ton of potential the thing that I don't like to see is obviously all of this volatility gap downs gap downs are never a good thing especially when it gaps down below that $20 mark. But the fact that it did fight back up at 18 makes me think that you do have a lot of potential here. I think that it's going to keep, maybe it may flatten out, and this might be a point to where if we look at this, it's starting to flatten out here. This might flatten out instead of having that large increase. You might see it a slow, a slow increase. But I do see um, you know, MVIS as something that could be a $25 stock easily. You see up here um, with a lot of potential in, um, the only thing is that I just don't like seeing what happened today um, or sorry in the after hours market you know seeing that gap down is not necessarily a great thing meaning that you have a large number of people that are willing to sell off but it does have potential to continue to, to move up just watch for any dip that it would have maybe you have a double bottom which indicates that it could shoot up over that $25 mark so AMC was was 595 this morning yeah it was it did push up to 595 right now it's at 597 so it's actually moving five percent in the pre-market that's amazing I, I would love to see this skyrocket love to see the volume increase Sorry, I gotta go through some security things for my for fidelity. Before the market opens, because it looks like 
AMC is having a great morning. Uh, GME is having a great morning as well. Um, some other ones are actually having a bad morning. Riot is down 15% basically. Yes, Emmy? What does Emmy need over here? Now I can sign in. <clears throat> All right, so we got one minute until the market opens. And remember, I'm still holding AMC. I'm still holding, uh, let's go to my portfolio here. So I'm still holding AMC at, uh, let's make sure everything's everything's good here. I'm still holding AMC at $6,200 worth of a loss. So let's continue to push this up. You know, right now it's up 4%. I'm almost, well, I guess you can really push the, the mark of 5%. I want it to push above that $6 mark because once it really breaks it, I think you'll have uh, a really good day. So it's 9.30 now. Um, you are seeing a bunch of sell orders come in for AMC. Let's look at a five-day mark. You have a bunch of sell orders coming in at, let's look at one minute chart. Really pushing down as of now. <coughs> um, taking away all of that increase that you did have over the pre-market, but you, that's just mainly people reacting to what the price actually was. If people are looking to sell it at, um, oh wow, GME is staying at the same spot, that's good. It is having a little bit of a move down, but it's looking like it's fighting it. You see a lot of people that are into this. That's really good. That's really good. It's up 15% right now. AMC still up two two and a half percent. Um, it is, you know, really fighting it on the buy side. Um, you're seeing a lot of red here. With everything here, you're seeing a lot of red. Churchill Capital is up 15%. It is decreasing, but you're seeing a lot of red. It's good to see a green candlestick. It's really good. AMC is going up. AMC is now at uh, three over three and a half percent. Churchill Capital is moving. Um, come on, let's let's push up AMC. Let's get this volume. You're seeing a lot of sell volume come in for AMC versus the buy volume. A ton of sell volume. You know, up in that that 150k range, but the sell volume is coming in at six dollars. So. They're setting up these walls um, at $6, and it's pushing up. Hopefully we could pass $6 here. We're not really seeing, we're seeing a, a sell wall at $6. I don't know if it's gonna pass it. It's gonna reverse. A lot of orders are getting filled. A lot of sell orders are getting filled at $6, a little bit below $6. Um, we really don't have any buy walls set up. We have also a larger sell wall at 622. So people are looking to, to get, get in and get out or just get out of their positions wherever they, they feel as though they could break even. <coughs> so I hear buy AMC. It's at a low. I mean, it's pushing up. Let's get it above $6. Can we get it above it? Come on. It's, it's really fighting that $6 mark. It's really fighting it. And there's gonna there's gonna be a bunch of walls there, you know. Oh, there we go. Push past six dollars. Yes, there we go. We got we got some movement here. Up basically six percent here. That's amazing. Let's keep it going. Now you, I know you're gonna see something come back because of the fact that you have all of these sell walls. Um, but it looks like it's moving today. Looks like it's giving you some good movement. GME is up twelve percent. Um, has decreased a little bit in the day. Um, let's hope we can see some positivity here. Hope we can see a lot of people 
and uh, whoa, 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 that's taking a hit. Handlebars look worse than what it actually is, but it's taking a real hit. You have AMC that's actually moving up, uh, starting to come back. Don't don't push below or don't pull below six dollars. Stay up, stay up there. Ah, that's not good. Pushing below six dollars is not a good deal because then it's going to be a mission to get back to above six dollars. Hopefully not. Hopefully we can find our way back up. We're close to it. Six percent today. Yeah, that's what I want to see. I I don't need it to go fifty percent. Um, I need it to go. 60% or <laughs> I don't need, <laughs> I don't need it to go 50%. I can have it go 6%, uh, 10%. <laughs> I don't need it to go 50%. I just need it to go 10% more. Like, no, that's not what I want it. I don't need it to go 50%. I just want it to uh, move a little bit during the day and have that slow gaining, um, you know, thought to it. You know, that's all I want from it. I don't need anything that's up to $12 in one day. That would be great, but I don't need it. You bought in at 13. Well, hopefully you were you you can average down, but I think that we will see it push up. I think AMC right now should be a 10 to 15 dollar stock, and I talked about this in a video that I uploaded today. It's a 10 to 15 dollar stock. <laughs> okay. All right, Jordan. Great to know. GME is pushing, is pulling below, well below. It is still up nine percent from close to close. From open to close, though, it, it's down quite a bit, a couple of dollars. Um, AMC is now starting to flatten out. You're seeing less volume come through. Uh, what was the volume in the beginning? Four million compared to what the volume used to be. You know, in the past, it would be tens of millions, um, maybe even hundreds of millions you can get, especially in that day that was 1.2 billion. Ooh. Was AMC buys halted? It should have, it, no, it shouldn't have been. <clears throat> it, unless they're doing something behind the scenes, it should not have been halted. Thank you for the $2 super chat, but it, it should have not have been halted. You're still seeing people come through with buys. It's just, for some reason, they're not showing up here. You have a number of, look at all these buy orders at $6. Or sorry, sell orders at $6. 219,000 at $6. Come on. Who's really selling at $6? People that bought in at 250, people that bought in at $7, $7 or $5, are they buying thousands and thousands of shares? Then I understand. But thank you, uh, uh, Callum for liking my video. I appreciate that if you can hit the like button, please do so But who's selling at six dollars after a 25 cent gain? Yes, that could be something if you buy a lot of shares But it makes no sense to me why you're selling at six dollars. It is consistently pushing above Six dollars here. So I love to see that um, Because in the past it was very it was difficult to get to six dollars So now we may have that fight between six and seven which is something that I wanted to see. I wanted to see it go up a dollar. I wanted to see it go up an, another dollar the next day, another dollar the next day. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be day traders. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, seeing people that, the only thing is that it doesn't make sense because it doesn't have, it doesn't, like it doesn't have consistency that it's going to grow at that rate. That's gonna get up to $6. So it, it shows that you know, it's inconsistent. So it couldn't really have been day traders. I would not see this as a buy opportunity down here um, for a short term gain of to get up to $6. I would not see that. <clears throat> Thank you, Jay Kelly for liking the video. I appreciate that so much. Hedge bun is going to pay for my boat. Yeah, I mean, they, they possibly could. I mean, you look at people that became millionaires off of GME, there's a lot of other positions that are out there too. AMC's up 7% today. That's amazing to see that they're up 7%. I'm so hype about that. What does my, my actual portfolio look like? It should, 
it up a dollar, it should have been a gain of basically 2,000. <coughs> yeah, it, it's moving. It's moving. You're up, you're up 7%, almost 8%. I would love a cough drop here, but I don't have any. <clears throat> Remember, I'm only streaming for 30 minutes past the open. So uh, we have 1,400 people in here. Please hit that like button. That would be amazing if you do that. Um, let's look at some other positions. So we can see Riot's down 10%. It has increased um, through the day. It was down 15% at the end of the uh, pre-market, but it is looking to push up. Maybe we're seeing it hit its double bottom here, or it looks like a double bottom. But let's look at it from a 10,000 foot view. You can see that it's getting close to that double bottom, and it may be um, to where it pushed up. And this might this might have been um, that bottom here um, to where it actually has a number of touch points. So it might push up from here, and you can see that it did increase quite a bit um, over the short term. So uh, right, it looks like it might be. It might have been at a buy opportunity somewhere around the open. <coughs> GME is up 15%. That's really good, up to $46. Let's see if we can continue to push up to you know $50, $56. That'll be amazing for a lot of people. I would love to see them have a large move today. Um, and uh, hopefully people can you know continue to drive that price up. That'll be amazing. Um, AMC is still hovering around that 7% mark, 7.5% mark, pushing up, which is really good. It has a wall at 622, so if we could push past that wall, you can see that you'll have a lot of positivity. This is what I love to see here. This looks more like it. This looks more like what the stock is capable of, you know, um, seeing a lot more volatility between, you know, you know, a dollar or two. That's what uh, AMC is capable of. And I wouldn't be surprised if it does pull back, you know, to about, let's say, uh, let's see where the uh, walls are. So there's see where the other buy walls are. There's it doesn't look like there's any buy walls. It looks like people are just coming in with consistent buys across the board. You don't have any huge walls, but you do have a sell wall at 622. Your broker only shows AMC at 570. Who's your broker? That's a that's a crazy difference. All right, day quote for your cough. Um, uh, I have some medicine. I don't know if I took. Yeah, I took a. I take a what's it called? Mucinex. The pills of Mucinex it actually works pretty well. And then I'll take a Zycam, the little tablets that shorten your cold. So like. Uh, How's the volume of AMC looking? Um, let's see what the day looks like. So the volume, the volume I'll tell you looks, um, well this is not even, yes it is AMC, uh, five minutes. Oh, did we push past? We pushed past uh, 622, that's amazing. We pushed past 622, that means we have a lot of people that are buying into it, um, this is amazing. The volume though, um, seven million over five minutes, <clears throat> Um, let's see, 4 million over the next five minutes, 2 million over the next five minutes. So we're seeing good volume. It's not to the level that it was, but we are seeing good volume. Yeah, I, I sold all my stupid uh, pot stocks, which would have recovered eventually, but I just bought at the wrong point. I reinvested in profits at better positions. That's, that's smart. That's what I... I hope you did do. If you lost a little bit of money, that's good. But if it did come down, <clears throat> geez, my voice just totally gave out. If it did come down um, to where it is now and you're able to reinvest and um, avoid all of that, the extra loss, then yeah, that's a good, a good deal. I think that you could see, um, you got a late ticker. Yes, he does. Sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place here. <clears throat> but yeah, the fact that it pushed past 622 is definitely a good thing. Um, but yeah, with, with pot stocks, um, I think that they do have potential long-term and short-term. Um, it's great to see AMC hovering. It's getting close to that 10% mark. Um, 
that's amazing. You're seeing a lot of, you do have a lot of sell orders coming in, but obviously we have quick buy orders and it's not limit orders. People are just getting it at market value, I guess. <coughs> you have a huge buy wall at, or a huge sell wall at $6.25. So we can push past that, which we have a couple of times and that'll be amazing. Bye bye shorts. <laughs> Did you see Keith Gill testimony on behalf of GME? I did see that. I did see him talk about it. He said that he wanted, he thinks that GME is um, a great target right now, that people should get into it right now. Um, I don't 100% agree with that, but if he says it, then yeah, you can definitely go with it. Um, he's made a lot of money on GameStop, and um, he shows that he looks into a lot more than just um, what the volume is doing. He looks into, you know, obviously he has a lot of influence in what he says, so he can push that stock price up by doing it. So, um, yeah, I think investing a smaller amount of shares or a smaller amount of money into where it is now, because obviously he sold, he had to have sold, um, making millions and then reinvest at a lower point because it would have been absolute, um, it would have been absolutely ridiculous for him not to sell up at those high points. Dogecoin making money even with a broken finger. What? <clears throat> oh, you're making money even with a broken finger. Well, that's amazing. Um, I, I have faith in crypto. I just don't like the volatility of crypto. And I say that all the time, but like I said, I can get into new things. I can get into options. I can get into crypto. I can get into all that stuff, but it's just going to take a little bit of time, especially since I'm not used to it. You're used to what you're used to. And if you can make money in these, in these areas, then I'm going to stick with that. Um, but obviously people telling me that I should have invested in Bitcoin or I should have invested in Dogecoin earlier and I just don't do it. It does hit hard, but I noticed that that's not something that I'm comfortable with. So that's the reason why I didn't invest. If someone told me to invest in something uh, for a day trading opportunity, I would research it and I would invest into it. Um, there have been a number of times where someone told me about um, Boeing and I got into it and made a good thousand dollars in a matter of, you know, a couple minutes. I think it was like four minutes. <clears throat> he took a $15 million profit. That's amazing. See, that's what I'm talking about. If you take a profit, then anything else you put in there is one, one, he's definitely playing with well over house money, but um, that's the reason why he can play with all this stuff. He can give his recommendations and drive a stock price up. And um, I think that it doesn't hurt him uh, to hold all this stuff in there. Matthew, I respect you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. What do you think about Rare earth stocks. I've never looked into um, some rare earth stocks. My voice is starting to go. <clears throat> Short ladder attacks running out of ammo. Oh, running, running low on ammo. Am I in Neo? I'm not. Um, Let's, let's open the, while this is, you know, fluctuating around this price, hopefully it stays above that $6 mark. That's what I'm hoping for. You know, I'm hoping for that, you know, five, you know, seven, 10% gain in the day. And then literally I'm comfortable with that in that day. And the next day we have a, a little bit more of a gain or a decrease of 2%, whatever. We're still up basically a total of 8% in that week. Um, then we can continue to, to, um, oh man. Um, then continue to actually uh, gain more profits and more profits out of it. Hopefully it continue to go up. <coughs> um, you are seeing, let's see, um, AMC, a lot of uh, sell orders. This has been consistent. You're seeing a lot of sell orders, but the price is consistently going up. So how does that make sense? That means that maybe they're covering. Maybe they're covering some things. Because you're seeing, did I lose weight? I mean, I work out, but I don't really need to lose weight, really. I don't think so. I've pretty much always been the same. Well, throughout college, I've been the same weight. 
<clears throat> I played football all my life, so I'm pretty pretty fit, but I don't think I lost weight. If I did, I lost muscle because I haven't actually um, lifted weights in a couple of weeks. So actually, I lied. Um, yesterday I did, but it wasn't something that was an intense workout. I just wanted to test um, my breathing right now because I'm even having trouble sometimes speaking. Um, I get out of breath, which is just because of the fact that I'm trying to push my voice into, you know, the volume. <clears throat> Are you interested in sense? It was interesting to me when I first looked into it. Do I have that up here? I should have. I thought I would have it on my popular. Maybe it, it updates. Um, I did have an interest in sense. Uh, let's see what it does look like. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, boom. Boom, Jason. I will check on that too. So let me copy this. <clears throat> TSNP. But uh, let's see what Sens has to offer here. So yeah, I was I was definitely happy with Sens the way they were moving um, because of the fact that you could see that that pull away from the 200 EMA and um, it, it looked like really it didn't have a full chance of going back. It started to flatten out. Um, when I looked at it back here, I knew that there was going to be a sell off. Um, and it wasn't something where it had a huge impact to it. So seeing that shows that it does have strength and that it's going to continue on the way up. So yeah, I can definitely say Sens can have a pretty decent steady increase and I can be, you know, I'm definitely interested in that. Words are attempting to cover. Yeah, I can definitely see that because uh, with AMC, you can see that um, it, you have a lot of sell orders that are coming in, but not a lot of buy orders. <clears throat> but the price is going up. So for uh, TSNP, this is basically what um, would have happened. If I, seen this, if I seen this cut right here, I could tell you what's going to happen in the second half. You know, you're going to have that, especially with these gap ups, any gap ups that you see, you're going to have that massive decrease. Now it looks like, it looks like it's starting to get back in line. Um, you're going to see that probably, um, you know, probably come back even more. You may, you may see people get into that because of the fact that it's a desirable price, but you might see it come back a little bit more, but this could be an entry point to get back up to that one, $2 mark. Um, I can definitely see this as a short-term play. Um, I don't really see this as more of a, a long-term option unless I look more into the news, but yeah. <clears throat> SNDL, yeah, I forgot about that. Let's look at, um, I think I have it right here. <coughs> so SNDL is definitely flattening out just like I, I said that it would do. You see this trend. This was just to push um, these stocks, push these cannabis stocks, right? So you see um, that you did have that pump and dump, and now it's starting to get back in line and starting to slowly increase. And you see a lot of buy orders that you do have, less sell orders. So I can say that you do have potential to continue to, to increase. Um, but you might see that flatten out for a little bit. As you can see, we're down 2% today. Um, so I would say that you know, it could be a pretty decent buy opportunity. But if you're thinking of getting up to that $4 mark and having a spike up like that, you're not going to see these. This is just a pump and dump. <clears throat> Let's look at AMC. So AMC's back down to $6. It just dropped below $6. I don't like to see that. Oops, why did I look at three months? So you are gonna see that fluctuation and I definitely knew that you were gonna see it. The separation from the 200 EMA is a great deal, but hopefully it doesn't come all the way back. I hope that it has a consistent upward trend. That'll be amazing. But uh, you, I knew that you were gonna see it you know, push back a little or pull back a little bit. The fact that it is going below $6 and coming back above $6 means that people are comfortable with it being at that price target. Um, where it was pre-pandemic, it was at it was at that $7 mark. So it should be above this <clears throat> where it stands. I believe that it stands at a $10 to $15 stock. Um, GME is still hovering around that 14%. You can see these large wide range, wide range candle bars there, but you're seeing back and forth. This looks like a, a decent stock to get into. If I was looking at this, it looks decent. You know, you have that volatility. Um, this low here creates a, a newer high here, creates a new low, 
creates a new high, creates a new low. I like seeing those things. Uh, what do you think? What do you think of buying a zone? <coughs> Because um, because news uh, should be coming that might 2x the price. If news is coming that would 2x the price and get a lot of people interested in it, then yeah, I definitely see uh, potential there. Let's look at um, from a 10,000 foot view. So from a 10,000 foot view, you can see the consistent growth, right? Yeah, it, it can push up. I think it will fight the $3 mark, but it just depends. You have a lot of buy orders, a ton of buy orders that are coming in. Um, 177,000, 110,000 at $2.15, 177,000 at twenty or at $2.20, so lower than what it is. Um, people, this might just be a down day that you see, but depending on what happens at one o'clock, usually one o'clock you'll see some sort of kick, and at the end of the um, the open hours, you will see um, a little bit of a kick as well. We have 1,600 people in here. Please hit that like button if you can. <clears throat> but in the current days, yeah, I can say it's been flat for a little bit. May have hit a little bit of a bot, not a true bottom, because obviously the stock price is on an upward trajectory. Um, but a a bottom of you know where it was at that two dollar mark. So let, well, let me scroll out a little bit and then scroll in. So you can see that it was up at that three dollar mark and had a consistent um a a slow sell-off not a fast sell-off so it was a slow sell-off down to two dollars but i do see potential in um 2xing the price at two dollars getting it up to four dollars but i don't know if it'll happen in a single day we need to see the volume um with the volume or with the price being at two dollars you need to see a, a lot more volume than where we stand you know at that's a one hour candlestick and you're seeing 11 million. You should see a lot more volume than that. So we need to see the volume push up before we can say that you will 2X the price, but it could be a buy opportunity, especially being at a lower point of the, the 10,000 foot view. You can see that you do have those increases, those dips a little bit or those flatten out points. Um, and you do have that increase here with a flatten out point, a dip, and then a flatten out point. So this may be a buy opportunity to get in and ride it up to at least $3, if not $4. So yeah, I can definitely say that you can see something good there. Yes, Beth, hit that like button, get it above 500 likes, we're 30 likes away. <coughs> what are your thoughts on GE this morning? Funny thing is, I think I have a lot of shares of GE. Let's look at, um, I'm going to go into these free stocks while we have while we have a chance. I have 16 free stocks. Let me bring up, uh, no, not, not losers to recover. I don't even know why I still have that on there. So we're hovering around that $6 mark for AMC. Let's bring this here. This is what I like to see, you know, um, the the volatility is what I like to see. And especially on the uptick, I would like to see it bounce back here, um, push up, and um, somewhere around that one o'clock mark, see it really push, you know, above, you know, maybe seven, seven dollars, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah. Is WWE a good long-term stock? Yeah, as you can see, that was something that I had on um, my big losers to recover list um, when I was looking at that. AMC is definitely doing some great work today, being up 5%, and I like the fact that it's above $6, or not above $6 now, but it's fighting between, you know, right at that $6 mark and a little bit above $6. I like to see that. Um, so uh, we do need to see a little bit more volume. But uh, yeah, what position did I play in football? I played um, mainly, um, I was a Z receiver, um, but I played slot receiver. I wasn't fast enough for a slot receiver. I also played tight end in college um, because there were a lot uh, faster wide receivers than I was. Um, I probably at my, at my fastest, at my, in my prime, I, I ran a four five, but there were people that ran a 
four three, four, almost uh, sub four two forty, and I mean they were fast. So yeah, there were people that were really fast. Everybody ran track. I didn't. Um, I focused on football, weightlifting, and being that strong receiver. So I played those. I did play a little bit of running back, and that's weird because I'm, you know, six three. So. <coughs> Oh, somebody just asked what, what was my height. I was, I'm 6'3". Six, 6'2 six, and a half officially, but 6'3". My wife likes to claim I'm 6'3". We're above 500 likes. Thank you for hitting the like button. I appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and look at these free stocks. We are above $6 here. Let's look at some of these free stocks. <laughs> Give me a second. Hopefully I get a good one. You think I get a good one? I bet you I, I get more ADT. Yep, there's ADT. I got a GE. Moved up pretty a decent amount. ADT. 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 And nine stocks left. Ford. I wish they still paid a dividend. ADT. 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 Ford. Give me a good one. Give me a good one. Come on. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> so that's good. I am majority shareholder in ADT. Um. <laughs> Let's look at what the price is actually doing here. Let me look at uh, refresh my account. I'm gonna invest some money into Weeble so that I can actually go in here and trade a little bit more. A lot of Weeble is consistent, uh, it consists of uh, my, my free stocks that I get. And then also I have AMC here. I still have a number of shares of AMC. <clears throat> 1,500 people in here, please hit the like button. <coughs> Should I buy now? AMC or wait for a dip. Um, this is where it's tough to say. I think that we are at these low points of you know five to six dollars. This would be a great time to get in and be comfortable where the price is. Um, in my opinion, if I could lower my cost basis to six dollars, that would be absolutely phenomenal. I was hoping that maybe it would go down initially, like down to four dollars or four fifty today, and it would you know kind of recover back up to. 550 and six dollars or whatever um, but that obviously didn't happen and I would I'm okay with seeing it go up um, I wanted to buy more into this position to lower my cost basis from nine dollars down to maybe seven but you know obviously that that makes it tough I could still lower my cost basis here it just won't lower it as much if I buy um, you know five thousand six thousand dollars worth of um, AMC, then it's not really going to show me that it has that, um, or that it's going to lower the cost basis down to where I want it to lower it to. It might lower it down to maybe sub nine dollars, um, eight fifty, but that's not enough. I want to lower it down to seven dollars. But I definitely see the potential in this in this stock being all the way up. Um, at ten dollars or fifteen dollars as of now it should be <clears throat> should i sell amc now i don't think so in my opinion i don't think uh would buy amc before it's too late yeah uh, before you see that large increase <clears throat> um so yeah i i have to end this stream i know i started a little bit late but I do have to end this stream. I just couldn't get my voice ready um, for this. So I don't wanna go off schedule because my normal schedule, I'm done at 10 and I wanna be done at 10. Um, but I'll make sure to update you guys. Hopefully I have something later today. I can um, record something later today. Um, I will record videos for tomorrow, but hopefully I can um, do something um, later today. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out, but I'm gonna end this video now. Um, it's great to see AMC. Still above 4%, but um, it is coming back a little bit, coming back to earth. Let's see it, you know, push back up, hopefully, throughout the day. GME's at 11%. You have a number of stocks that are down. 
Um, SNDL is actually moving, uh, making a little bit of a move today. So if you wanted to get, if you got into that in the beginning of the day, you're definitely making a little bit of a move. It's not a crazy amount, it's 1%, but it is a move. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, guys, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, if you're interested in this platform, um, it's Weeble. Go down to the description, click the link, sign up, deposit $100, you'll get free stocks. But uh, I'll catch you guys in the next stream. Make sure you check out the videos that I um, posted earlier today, and I believe I have another video going up maybe at like 12 or something. I'm not 100% sure, but definitely check it out. Thank you again to everybody that stopped by, everybody that supports me. But uh, I'm going to go get out of here and go get out of here. I'm going to get out of here and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next. Oh, my goodness. It's really dipping down. All right, now it's starting to recover a little bit. But uh, I'll catch you guys in the next stream. See ya.